Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be covering lab number 9 in the authentication module titled Brute Forcing ST Logged In Cookie. Alright, before we continue with the video, I'd like to announce that this video is part of a course that I offer on my academy. Now you might be wondering, why would I buy a course that is made available for free on YouTube? Well, there are four reasons why you might want to do that. Number one is that you gain early access to recorded material. As soon as I record new videos, I make them available through my course right away. Whereas on YouTube, they'll only be released on a weekly schedule. Reason number two is that you gain access to a Discord channel where you can ask questions. The Discord channel is divided into topics that we cover in the course and if you run into any issues, you get to ask questions about anything related to the course material. Reason number three is that you no longer have to deal with YouTube ads or sponsor messages. And last but not least, reason number four is you get to support me. Any revenue generated from this course will go back into maintaining the academy and creating more videos and courses that will be made available for free on my YouTube channel. So if you're interested in buying the course, make sure to check out the link in the description. And that is it. Let's go back to our video. If you do not have an account on the Web Security Academy, you can get one by visiting the URL portswigger.net slash websecurity and clicking on the sign up button. I already have an account and I am logged in. So to access the exercise, I'm going to click on Academy. Select all labs. Do a search on authentication and then select lab number nine titled brute forcing ST logged in cookie. All right, let's get started. This lab allows users to stay logged in even after they close their browser session. The cookie used to provide this functionality is vulnerable to brute forcing. To solve the lab, brute force Carlos's cookie to gain access to his My Accounts page. And then you've got your credentials, the victim's credentials, and candidate passwords. So the target goal over here is to exploit a vulnerability in the stay logged in functionality to brute force a valid cookie for the Carlos user and then access the Carlos account. All right, let's get started. Now notice over here, this is the built-in browser in Burp, and so all my requests are already being passed in my Burp proxy. I am using the professional version of Burp because we will be using the intruder functionality, which is heavily throttled in the community edition. And so if you're using the community edition, it might take some time to exploit the vulnerability. We will be scripting it in Python. And so if you don't have the professional version, you could just write the Python script. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is log in with the regular user account credentials that we were given just to see how the authentication functionality works. So let's hit log in. This is the post request that is performed. Now, if we look at it over here, you could see it's a post request to the slash login endpoint. It takes in the username, the password, and then the stay logged in flag. And um, when you send the request, it responds with two cookies, the session cookie, which is the regular cookie, and then the stay logged in cookie, which allows you to continue being logged into the application even after you've closed the browser. So this over here doesn't look random to me, so I'm going to copy it and go to decoder, put it in here, and then decode as base64. And you could see over here, it's definitely not random. It's the name of the user that we just logged into, and then a semicolon, and then what looks like an MD5 hash password. So I'm gonna copy this, just to confirm that it is an MD5 hash of the password. I'm gonna go to crackstation.net, put it in here, say I'm not a robot, and then select all the traffic lights, hit verify, and then click on crack hashes, and here we go. So this does confirm that this is an MD5 hash, and uh, the plain text password was Peter. And so this stay logged in cookie has the hash of the user, which means that what we could do is if they don't have any brute force prevention mechanisms, then we could potentially brute force the password of the Carlos user if he is logged into the application or he has logged into the application previously and clicked on the stay login flag. All right, so before we do that, uh, let's make a few notes. So the password is uh, base64 of the username, a colon, and then an MD5 
hash of the password. Okay, so this looks good. So what we're going to do is essentially we're going to base64, Carlos, because Carlos is the account that we want to access, and then we're going to md5 hash every possible password that we have, and then we're going to submit it as the state logged in cookie. And if we get the my account page of Carlos, that means we've brute forced Carlos's password. If we don't get the my account page of Carlos, that means it was the incorrect password. Now, before we leave this page, a quick disclaimer, you should never put hashes in an online application because that's considered a breach of information. You should always use an offline cracking tool like Hashcat. But because this is an exercise, I rather just do it here than use Hashcat for that. All right, let's log out. Go back to Burp, go to proxy. Now this post request right over here, if we see HTTP history, after we logged in, it makes a request to the My Account page and that contains this stay logged in cookie. So let's send this to Intruder. And then in Intruder, we're gonna click on Clear. The session cookie should be empty because what happens is if you have a stay logged in cookie that is valid, it'll generate a new session for you. And then over here, this is what we want to brute force. So click Add. And then under payloads, we're going to say it's a simple list and we're going to get that from the candidate passwords. Let's copy it. Click paste. And we can't just put the raw password because we saw over here, this is the format that is used for the stay logged in cookie. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make use of payload processing to perform this action over here. So the first thing that we're going to do is MD5 hash the password. So hash. And then we're looking for MD5. Click OK. And then we're going to add a prefix, which is Carlos. That's the account we're trying to brute force. Click OK. And then we're going to base64 the entire string. So encode. And the encoding mechanism is base64. And this looks good. So what this does is essentially for each payload over here, so for each password, it'll first MD5 hash the password. And then it'll add Carlos colon to that. And then for the entire string, it'll be 64 encoded. Okay, this looks good. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Go to positions and click on start attack. And you could see over here, I get a 200 okay for the one that is valid. And then 302, that leads me to the login page for an invalid one. And so I'm looking for another 200 okay. And I find it right over here. So you could see over here, it, the response over here, if we render, is Carlos's account. So we successfully completed the exercise. And if we go back, you could see it says, congratulations, you solved the lab. All right, so we successfully completed the exercise by exploiting the vulnerability using Burp Intruder. Now let's script it in Python. Okay, let's move that right over here. Actually, let's remove that completely and then move this right over here. Let's save this, and as usual, import all the libraries that we're gonna need. So the request library, the sys library, the URL lib3 library, the hash lib library, which will allow us to ha MD5 hash the password, and the base64 library, which will allow us to encode the entire string. Next, we're going to disable insecure request warnings. So disable warnings URL lib3 dot exceptions dot insecure request warning. And then we're going to set our proxy setting. So we're going to say send all of HTTP traffic to HTTP. 127.0.0.1, port 8080, and same goes for all HTTPS traffic. Send it to HTTP 
127.0.0.1, board 8080, and that's where burp is running. Next, we'll call our main method. So if name is equal to equal to main, then call the main method. And we'll define the main method right over here. So if the length of the command line argument is not equal to 2, so if the user ran the programming correctly, then print the usage instructions, which is the name of the program, and then the URL of the application. And the name of the program we take from the command line argument. And then we'll also print the example instructions, which is, again, the name of the program and then an example URL. So let's say www.example.com. And the name of the program we take from the command line argument. And then we exit the program because the user ran it incorrectly. All right, this looks good. Now let's assume the user did run it correctly. So we've got URL is equal to sys.rv. So we take the URL from the second command line argument, and then we call a function called access Carlos account that takes in the URL of the application. Now this is a custom function that will do the brute force attack for us, and we'll define it right over here. Access Carlos account URL. First thing we're gonna do is print a statement saying that we're brute forcing Carlos's password. And then from there, we're going to say with open passwords.txt. So we're going to read from that file as files, as file. And this file essentially is just a list of candidate passwords that we got from over here. I believe I already have the file saved in here, and I do. So if we look over here, this is just a list of candidate passwords. So we're going to iterate through each password. So we're going to say for pwd in file. First, we're going to hash the password. So we're going to say hashed password is equal to Carlos. So the name of the username plus hash lib dot md5 and then the password. Now the password might have a carriage return or a new line after it and so we're going to use our strip to remove all carriage returns and new lines and then we're going to encode it so that it's in the proper format. So we're going to say encode utf8 dot hacks digest. Okay, this looks good. Next, we're going to encode uh, the entire string. So let's say encoded pwd. And we're going to use the base64 library for that. So base64 dot b64 encode and we're going to say bytes hashed pwd and again proper encoding which is utf8 and since this is in bytes we need to decode it so we're going to say string pwd is equal to encoded pwd dot decode utf8 all right, so we do need it in string format so that it can be put in as a cookie. All right, so next is just perform the request. So we're going to say r is equal to request.session. And then we're going to say the my account URL is equal to URL plus the path to my account. So if we close this one over here, let's discard it and look at 
this over here, it's a get method to the slash my account endpoint. So slash my account and the cookies that it takes is equal to this cookie over here. So the stay logged in cookie, stay logged in. And that's equal to this string password right over here. So let's copy that and put it in here. And then we just perform the request. So request is equal to r.get the my account URL cookies is equal to the cookies we just defined. Verify is equal to false because I don't want to verify TLS certificates and proxies is equal to proxies. And then in order to confirm that we properly logged in, we're going to say if logout is in rack dot text, so in the response of the request, then print Carlos's password is and add the raw password over here, which is just PWD. And then we're going to exit the program. No need to loop through the rest of the passwords. But if we don't find it, even after we've looped through all the passwords, then we're going to print could not find Carlos's password. And here we go. We save this. This looks good. Let's go to terminal, new terminal. Hopefully we don't have any errors. Now let's see if the lab timed out. So let's close this. Hit enter over here and it looks like it timed out. So let's generate a new instance of that and prepare to run our program. Let's copy that, paste it in here and then remove the trailing slash, hit enter. And we do have an error. So you could see over here it says line 24 and we're missing the argument URL. So let's go to line number 24. So my account URL is equal to URL plus slash my account. So this looks fine. I don't think that's the error, but I'm noticing over here I'm missing the brackets, which might be what's causing the issue. Let's see if that's the case. And I think it is. Okay, so you could see over here now it's brute forcing Carlos's password. And since all my requests are being passed in my proxy, you should see that it's trying all the possible passwords over here. So every time the my account stay logged in cookie changes until it finds a valid one that redirects it to the my account page. And here we go. It found it. So you could see over here, Carlos's password is a bunch of sevens. And if we go over here, you could see it says, congratulations, you solved the lab. All right, so we successfully completed the exercise by exploiting the vulnerability manually and then scripting it in Python. In the next lab, we'll look at another case of a broken authentication vulnerability. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Also, make sure to check out my course if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. Thank you and see you in the next video.